calculate the value of a that is 4.1 we're given the graph of f of x which happens to be equals to a x squared and we are supposed to find the value of a right this is a very basic equation on the graph of fx we are given a point p of coordinates minus 6 for the x value and minus 8 for the y value it should be obvious what we need to do we're going to substitute the point p into f of x that ensures that we have a y value with its corresponding x value and the only unknown would be a in doing that we're going to get minus 8 being equals to a multiplied by minus 6 squared so a is going to be equals to minus 8 divided by 36 minus 6 squared should give us 36 so when i put that in my calculator i get minus 2 over 9 that is the value of a so that is all that we need to do for 9.1 but just to help us moving forward we know that f of x is equal to minus 2 over 9 x squared we can actually try and see if the value of a is correct by substituting minus 6 and see if we get minus 8 indeed if you substitute minus 6 you're gonna get minus 8 so that sort of boosts our confidence in believing that what we did in 4.1 is correct 4.2 determine the equation of f inverse in the form y is equals to so let's take a look at that we know that f of x that is just y which is equals to minus 2 over 9 x squared we want to determine the equation of f inverse so what is this first step the first step is to swap x and y right so in place of y we put x and in place of x we put y right and then now we need to solve for y obviously we're going to divide x by minus 2 over 9 so we're going to get y squared being equal to x divided by minus 2 over 9 we can rewrite that as y squared being equal to minus 2 over not minus 2 but minus 9 over 2 minus 9 over 2 multiplied by x so there we go that is what we have and then in making y the Subject so the formula and not y squared, we take square roots on both sides. So we take in the square root on the left hand side, we take in the square root on the right hand side. Maybe let me just create some space here because we need plus or minus when we introduce a square root. So y is going to be equal to minus the square root of minus 9 over 2 multiplied by x. Maybe the question now is, why am I taking minus instead of plus, right? How am I reaching this conclusion? You have to remember that this actually answers 4.3 at the same time. Because 4.3 says that write down the range of F inverse. My explanation for 4.2 will also answer uh, 4.3. The domain of F of X is the range of F inverse. So take a look at the information we have here. The domain x is less or equals to zero. So if the domain of f of x, we have x being less or equals to zero. When we talk about f inverse, the range y is going to be less or equals to zero. That's how it works. That is how the domain and the range of the function and its in uh, its inverse uh, sort of work right the domain will give you the range the range will give you a domain in that fashion so that's why here i'm going with the minus sign because these will always give us a positive answer right so how would, how do we then ensure that y is equal to zero or less than
there has to be a minus sign there so that is 4.2 but in answering 4.2 we've answered 4.3 4.3 looks for the range of f inverse so y is less or equals to zero there we go 4.3 right let's take a look at 4.4 so in 4.4, we're supposed to sketch the graph of f inverse and indicate the coordinates of any point on the graph different to 0 and 0. So different from 0 to 0, the easiest point to uh, put on the graph, right, on, the, on our sketch would be the point P. Because if on f of x, we have x, y. On f inverse, right? We're going to have y, x. That's what the inverse does. The function maps x values to y. And then the inverse it does the opposite. It maps y to x in that fashion. Right. So on f of x, we had our point P with coordinates minus 6 and minus 8. So on f inverse, uh, P prime, right, should be minus 8 minus 6 when you substitute minus 8 on the inverse it will give you minus 6 because when you substitute minus 6 on f it gives you minus 8 the inverse is essentially uh laying out the range and maybe need to the domain instead of taking elements in the domain and putting it on the range so that is uh 4.4 we have that point p so let's go ahead and have our x and y axis so Yes, our y axis and yes, our x axis. There we go. And then maybe let's just indicate that uh, this is y and this is x. Uh, this is minus 8. Let's put minus 8 here and put minus 6 somewhere here. Put minus 6 somewhere here. So here we have our point p prime right um which we're supposed to put on f inverse so how will f inverse look like what is the general shape of this function right what is the general shape of that function well this is how um f prime is gonna look like f prime is gonna look like that and this is our point p of coordinates minus hey i'm doing it the wrong way here we're not supposed to have minus uh, eight as the y the y must be minus six and x is the one that should be minus eight right so x is minus eight and y is minus six so that is f inverse right four point four let's take a look at 4.5 4.5 the graph of f is refle reflected across the line y is equal to x so let's address y is equal to x first y is equal to x y is equal to x is the inverse y is equal to x is the inverse right and we already know that the inverse we have y being equal to minus the square root of minus 9 over 2x okay so the graph is reflected across the line y is equal to x. We have taken care of that, right? And thereafter, it is reflected across the x-axis. It is reflected across the x-axis. Determine the equation of the new function in the form y is equal to. Okay, so we have done the y is equal to x. Now let's talk about the reflection across the x-axis right reflection about the x-axis about the x-axis uh, that's what um it is usually written as reflection about and not reflection across uh, but it's the same thing it's the same thing so reflection about the y-axis uh, you put a minus sign you put a minus sign on y you put a minus sign on y so here we have our y so reflection about the x-axis, we're going to put a minus sign on the y. So minus y is equal to minus the square root of minus two minus 9 over 2x. 
Obviously, we want y to be the subject of the formula. So we're going to divide both sides by minus 1, of which we're going to get y being equals to the square root of minus 9 over 2 multiplied by x. x is another square root and not outside. So there we go. That is question 4.